I'll talk a little bit about networking. Um, uh, tell me if I'm telling you how to suck eggs. Um, IP4 addressing simplified. Um, everyone knows the structure. Everyone's dealt with IP addresses, although from the number of support thing conversations that I have in November, I don't think everyone does fully understand IP4 addressing. Um, the structure is that there are four numbers between 1 and 255. Generally, you can use zero in some circumstances, not more. Um, a subnet is uh, basically a way to partial up, pass, uh, parcel up the address space. Um, only machines that are in the same IP address can talk directly to one another. Uh, things that are in other subnets can talk to one another, but only via a router. So you have to have something like your, your internet router or something to get to. So your controllers, your Pi, etc., all need to have um, a similar net, network structure. So there's, and I'll, I'll get it, go a little bit more into that. Private networks, typically you'll use a 192.168 with two other numbers, they're private networks, or 10 and, and the other three numbers would be random. They're private networks, right? So there is no machine on the internet that has that IP address. It's an address that you can use locally in your network and pretty much everyone uses some sort of IP address like that. The way the subnet works is the sub, subnet acts like a mask. So if you have a, a subnet that says 255.255.255.0, that means the first three numbers, so the 192.168 and the X, have to be the same on two machines in order for them to talk to one another. If this was just 255.255.0.0, then 192.168 and any two numbers could talk directly to each other. Okay? That's how subnet works. Okay? Most people typically use this, and that means that on your network, you're basically limited to about 254 machines talking to one another. Yeah? Um, a gateway, so when you set up a gateway, so on your laptop you'll have a gateway, that is the IP address of a machine that is within your subnet that you should send any packets to that are trying to get to a machine that's not in your subnet. So if you're in the network 192.168.0. star, anything, and you want to send a packet to 192.168.5. something, right, that's not in your subnet. So it will go to whatever your gateway is, and the assumption is that that machine, which is typically your internet router, will know how to pass the packet on. And typically it will send it to your ISP, and from there it will go out to the internet, and from there who knows where it will end up. Okay? So that's what a gateway is, and that's why it's important that you have one on your home network, otherwise you can't configure. So if you've got a laptop and you get rid of your gateway, you won't be able to talk to the internet because it doesn't know where to send the packet to. Make sense? All right. So common home network, you have some sort of router, a Wi-Fi router with a, an IP address. Um, you might have your PlayStation, a laptop connected via Wi-Fi, etc. Notice we're on a 255.255.0 network, so the first three numbers on every device internally is exactly the same. Okay? The router has two IP addresses. It has an IP address facing into your home network, but it has another IP address, which is an IP address that's been allocated by your ISP. Okay? So when you try and send a packet to Google, it has an IP address that's not 192.168.0, so that packet is sent to your router, and the router realises that's not in my network, so it sends it out here onto the internet, and your ISP takes care of routing it. And you want to see how that works? Open up a command prompt, type in traceroute www.google.com, and it will list you all of the IP addresses that that packet bounces through to get to Google. All right? Shows you how your network's working. Many of you will run DHCP. DHCP is a service that most commonly people run on their router, and what it does is it allocates IP addresses. So if you decide not to give your, your laptop an IP address, you say, no, I want to use DHCP, and what will happen is when your laptop turns on, it'll send a broadcast packet onto the network and say, there must be someone out there who can give me an IP address. And your router, which is running this DHCP, will detect that packet and it'll say, yeah, that's me. 
here's an IP address that you can use, and it gives it a lease, which is an amount of time in which that IP address is valid. And from then on, your laptop will use it. Now, if you don't have a DHCP service, and it broadcasts out and says, is there anyone out there with an IP address? No one responds. Your laptop has no IP address. It can't talk to the network. All right, so if you plug your controller into your home network and you're testing and it's all good, you get it out onto your show, you plug it into your show, and the damn thing won't work, maybe it was set up to expect to get DHCP service and get an IP address. And that's why I always configure my controllers with static IP addresses. I always know how to get to them. All right, I'd avoid DHCP for that reason. The other problem with it is, of course, who knows what IP address it's going to have, right, because it's a lease. You know, you turn it on for a year, next time you turn it on, you'll get a randomly allocated IP address in the range. So don't go there. A simple show network. Notice there's no router. There's a switch. Okay? You generally don't need a router to run a show network. A switch is just fine. You can pick them up. 50 or 80 bucks. If you want to get one out of China, I picked up some gigabit ones for 10 bucks from China. They're cheap as. Again, I, I just come home from Vegas, so I'm using Gil's subnet. Uh, 192.168.5 is my subnet, right? And each device has got an IP address within that subnet. Okay? It doesn't matter. The, the, the numbers themselves don't mean anything. You can use any number you like. There's no reason why the gateway has to be dot one. It can be dot twenty seven or dot fifty six or whatever, but they have to be unique. If they're not unique, then you have a problem. So this is also a uh, common setup that uh, I dealt with a number of people trying to configure last year, and that's where they want to have the show network, they want to have it separate, but they want to be able to get into it from their home network, right? But they don't want to run all their lights on their home network, okay? And the easiest way I found to do that is to use the Pi Player as a network bridge. So the Pi Player. It's connected via a switch to all of your controllers. I'm only showing one, but you can have as many as you like. And that's connected via the Ethernet port. Right? It's on network 192.168.5. No gateway. Why no gateway? Well, because going out, of, I don't want any packets routed out of here other than things that are going to 192.168.5. Right? If the Pi has got an IP address that it wants to reach, which is not within a... Um, either of these networks that it knows, I want it to send it out this one. If I put a gateway on here, then and then I'm on the Pi and the Pi wants to reach out to another network, it's random whether it's going to try and go out my show network or out my Wi-Fi network. I always want it to go out the Wi-Fi network because that's where the internet is. Um, the Pi is also connected by the Wi-Fi, so it's at least a Model 2 as a Wi-Fi connection, and it's sitting on my home network. All right. So I have the internet, 192.168.0, and here is my laptop, etc. Now this laptop can see the Pi, but it can't see my controller, not by default, not unless we do something special to make that work. Yeah? Because what happens when I try typing 192.168, sorry, 168.5.110? Right, well, that's not this network. So it's going to send it to the gateway, which is this device. What's this device going to do? It's going to send it out here. What's the internet going to do? It's going to say, I don't know that address, All right, and drop it, and it'll never respond. However, the Pi here can act as a bridge. All right, so it is able to forward packets from the Wi-Fi side to the Ethernet side, but you've got to configure it. And there's a couple of things that you need to do. The checkbox down here at the bottom of the network configuration page, which is enable routing between network interfaces. You've got to turn it on. When you turn it on, the Pi is able to pass a packet from the Wi-Fi to the Ethernet port and from the Ethernet port to the Wi-Fi port. Okay? So it bridges the network. But that's not enough. On any Windows PC, I, I don't know how you do this on the Macintosh, so you can work that one out. You want to access your controller, so you've got a PC, your laptop, sitting on your home network, 192.168.0. Right, you need to run a command, and here's the command. 
And what this is saying is, it's telling the Windows computer, when you want to access an IP address which is in the 192.168.5 range, that's our show network, right? And the mask says, well, that's the, the portion that you need to care about. I need you to send it to this machine. So, so normally, when I type in 192.168.5, it's sending it here. But because we're adding the route, we're saying, no, 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 no. For those addresses specifically, 192.168.5, you need to send those packets to this device instead. Okay? And fortunately, this device knows about the 192.168.5 network, and so it's able to pass it over and down to uh, your show network. Okay? And once, you, uh, once that works, you can do a route print to see that that command's actually worked, and a ping will work. So if you ping the IP address, this one here, after you've added that route command up here, you should see a response from that IP address. Okay? But there's a problem. Okay? So while your laptop is now able to see the pi, it's even able to see this IP address here, it's even able to route a packet to here, you can't get a packet back. Why can't you get a packet back? Because the Falcon controller's got to know how to send a packet back to your network. So how does that work? Let me talk about it. So the way you work with that, I've shown it here, is you set a gateway on your Falcon board or whatever other controller you happen to have, assuming you can. If you can't set a gateway on your controller, you're out of luck. Okay? But if you set that gateway that says, when you want to access a network, a strange network like our 192.168.0.12, you need to send that packet to this device here. And then, of course, the Pi knows how to pass that over to the Wi-Fi link and get back to your laptop. And so once you've configured that gateway, you've configured the route, you should be able to ping the Falcon controller, even though it's on a separate network, and you should be able to access the configuration page and do all of that sort of stuff from there. You can even send data to the controller here, E131 data, etc. Does that make sense? Okay, that's kind of nice because otherwise what you've got to do is you've got to disconnect your laptop from your home network, connect your laptop into your show network, and do it that way. Unicast, multicast, and broadcast. How many use unicast? How many use multicast? Everyone else? Who knows, doesn't know what it is? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so unicast is point to point. So when I say I want to send this data to this particular IP address, okay, when the data's going through that network, right, it's coming from here, goes to the switch, and the switch says, because it's tagged to a particular device, the switch sends the data only to that device. Okay? No other device on the network sees that packet at all. No matter what you do on that device, you can't see the packet because the switch has only sent it to one place. Broadcast, when I send the packet to the switch in broadcast mode, the switch sends it to everyone. Okay? Now, conceptually, multicast is a middle ground. Conceptually, in multicast, what happens is the device, when it turns on, knows which universes or which packets or which IP addresses it's interested in. And what's meant to happen is these devices are meant to go to the switch and say to the switch, I am interested in any data that's directed to this multicast address. Okay? And then when this device here, the Pi, sends the data to the switch, the switch takes that multicast packet and says who's expressed interest in seeing this data, and then it would only send the data to the devices that expressed interest. But there's a catch. Most of the retail type routers that you buy, sorry, switches that you buy, do not implement multicast. So what do they do? They broadcast it. That's fine, unless you're running something like an ESP pixel stick or you're trying to use an Arduino with a very limited capacity um, network, in which case it just basically swamps those device. Okay? So when would you use multicast? Um, when you're very lazy and you don't care, when you really do want controllers to listen to the same uh, packet. So if you've got multiple trees out there and you actually want them to always be the same, 
Multicast is kind of nice because you send the data out once, two trees listen to it, and they both do the same thing. All right. Outside of that, I generally wouldn't recommend it. I, I think unicast is not that much harder to do. You should know your network better. The, the other beauty of uh, multicast is you, you can get away with DHCP because you don't actually care what the IP addresses of the devices are. Right, because they know what they're going to listen to. You don't even know, need to know what they are. However, if you want to go and configure them, good luck going and working out what the IP address <laughs> of the device is. Anyway, that's multicast and unicast. IPv6, avoid it. None of the current range of controllers support it. None of the current sequences output it. Um, you can use it on your home network, but it's not particularly useful to us. New this year, um, the Hinks Fix, the F16 v3 and the F4 v3 are starting to introduce these daisy chaining. And this allows you to have your Pi, your switch, connect to a device here with this IP address and then daisy chain off a second device. Okay, That second device could be an older device. It doesn't have to be a v3 or a Hinks Fix or whatever, right? It could be anything. Okay? And what happens is the switch knows whether it receives a 113 or a 110 packet, it will still send it down that same wire. And when it gets here, this thing will just pass it along. I think that's it.